hello welcome back to my channel it's dedicated towards creating narcissistic abuse awareness and more so from a biblical standpoint and i'll also be discussing other general life issues today i'll be skating into another narcissistic term you're going to come across in the narcissistic corridors and that's none other than land helplessness land helplessness is a state in which one gets into after repeated attempts to to voice their opinion or to to stand up for themselves against an injustice unfortunately it falls on deaf ears or is met usually with violence so to avoid being violated the victim goes along with uh, the abuser's demands this is a survivor's tactic talk of the catch 22 victims normally go along with what the perpetrator is demanding so that they do not get beaten up again i'm going to use this cognate of the of the elephant when it's captured while it's still a baby they train them they chain them up onto these huge uh, trunks or rock rock like places and the the chains are brief they are not so long each time the elephant is trying to pull itself away it's it's met with that resistance it's met with resistance over time the elephant gives up so by the time they bring them to the circus and they're wondering they are just using a string why doesn't it just break a break off the thing is that elephants have one of the they have large brains and one of the animals with the greatest longest memory known may help an elephant today when it's just five years old 20 years later down the road the day it meets you it can remember you're the person who saved it maybe from the pit the circus master is, is in charge of these elephants and we're wondering how is that they can master these huge animals the obedience to him the thing is that down these ends something happened to them the same system abusers use to to manipulate their victims and they control them that way in narcissistic abusive situations the abuser trains you to comply with their way of governance they may go silent treatment on you they may humiliate you they may name call you they may beat you up to a pulp and some of them after beating you you're wrecked you know that violent nature scares away people who would come and try to help they are blame shifting gaslighting they are isolating you triangulating you they are inconsistent with their words and actions you know it's a host of issues and, and even the love bombing the abuser will use whatever tactic they will need to to use to hold you down to break your spirit narcissistic abuse is not just something physical it's a spiritual battle because these people are after your soul the way you're sold out to christ these people want you to be sold out to them everything you do for christ they want you to do it unto them so in the end, you find that you get depleted spiritually when you're around these people. They want you to comply to their whims, their wants, their desires at any given time. Jump. It's not even how high. It is about, okay, jump higher. Okay, now jump lower. The abuser's playbook is always that what attracted them to you is what they are going to use against you. Say so if you're, inter you're intellectual, they are going to come after your intellect. You may have maybe attained a master's, you're pursuing a PhD, you have this great job, giving you a huge salary, and the bank is bigger than theirs, by the way. They are going to come after you. They will tell you how stupid you are, you're nothing. If it wasn't that you're sleeping with the boss, you didn't get that position. You're, you're looking beautiful, and that's why you're getting that promotion or your that's why you got the job i mean they'll come at you stripping you of each and everything that that you know is good you're blessed to have it and this is coming from someone you love so you can imagine the emotional and psychological damage it, it does to one's body and their well-being their whole thing is just to strip you of, of your identity such that you now acquiesce with theirs you cease to be you are an extension of them. That's what all these abusers want. The way you, you're like, I no longer, I, I no longer live for me. I live for Christ. Abusers want that for them, except that they are not God. 
these are, are sinners. They have reprobate minds. Abusers are just so envious of you, their partner. You may even not see these qualities. That is the amazing thing. So they are going to come after you. Before you know it, you're giving them your ATM card or credit card. You have to account for your whereabouts from work straight home home maybe church you're not supposed to talk to people you're not supposed to talk to your friends they start isolating you from your support system without you knowing and the whole time you're thinking you know i need to to be submissive to the man he's thinking i'm overdoing this i'm stepping on him because my pay is bigger you know things of that nature all your hobbies are flushed down the drainage they are literally stripping you of your identity slowly but surely they may get rageful, they may beat you up for for earning more than them. Your time from work, they give you maybe 30 minutes. 30 minutes sharp, one minute past, you enter the house, you're beaten. I mean, you, people cannot believe someone of your position, assuming you're even the CEO of a particular company. People may not believe you because, I mean, you're this you have all this authority you have this power how come the man is doing this to you but but it does happen it's happening to people you'd be shocked to hear they're in this they're in this situation and assuming you people have had a fight and you know you pack your things and leave they cow the cowardly now nature of bring you back they are going to call friends come and help me she's leaving she has left me or she's leaving she has gone to this one's home they go park outside, they're on phone with you, they are calling the people inside, they have called this friend, please go and talk to her. Eh, you know, it almost feels like I'm, I, I'm going to die if you leave me. I'm going to die, please. You're now trauma born to this person, you're thinking, oh my God, I'm even not being a good wife, I'm not forgiving and all that. Remember, forgiveness does not mean allowing someone to come back and abuse you. They do not understand the language of forgiveness. Forgiveness means that you, you're the one who recognizes you're the one who was wrong. You've now realized, oh, I was wrong. I'm sorry, I need to let him back. That's what abusers interpret as forgiveness. They do not understand the, the term, the word forgiveness, like a Christian does. No, they don't. So they swear they're not going to beat you up again. They made a mistake and all that. They, they will plead, they will plead their cause. They will carry the bags into the car. You go back home. They are, they are asking whether you need some water or juice. I mean, you are back to the honeymoon phase. After just some few hours of beating you up, I go. Ah, the next day, wake up and it's breakfast in bed. He has gone to work within, uh, I think, two or three hours. He's calling to find out how you're doing. I mean, it's the love warming again. You just feel, wow. This is the person I, I met. This is the person I fell in love with. But it is only for a while. Because shortly after that, again, the, the pendulum of abuse begins. Love bombing, devaluation. He beats you up again. And he can't even tell you, leave, leave. He throws out your things. And guess what? The house you bought, it could even still be in your name, but he'll throw you out. That cycle continues. It is you who gets tired. They don't because that continuous. You go, you can't. They can't pick you. You go, they can't pick you. The thing is that it gives them energy. They get a burst of energy out of it. Narcissistic supply. Look up that video. They get a burst out of it. They're beating you. You know they are in control. When they supposedly come and plead, the way they plead by the determines how they are going to treat you again. If you make them kneel, if you make them, I mean, go in circles trying to get you back. When you come back, they are going to abuse you further. Abuse never goes down. Abuse always escalates. So don't be fooled by, please forgive me, I won't do it. I don't know what overcame me. I don't know what happened and, I, and then I beat you up and then, you know, and then, and then forget about that and then... They knew what they were doing and they know what they are doing even as they plead their case for you to come back. Don't be fooled. It's just a game for them. This is a very systematic way of brainwashing by the abuser. 
this goes clearly against the nature of God. God God tells us how he has great plans for us. Jeremiah 29:11 says, "For I know the plans I have for you," declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a, a hope and a future. Land helplessness stifles one's hope. Hope is what keeps us going knowing that what we are expecting shall come to be. You cannot talk of prosperity when you're slowly being chipped off of your identity. The narcissist, remember, wants, to, wants you to acquiesce to them. And uh, by you chipping your identity for them, you are now losing your identity in Christ. And yet it's only in Christ that we find this prosperity. Land helplessness strips one of hope. Yet hope is very essence for us Christians to get to where we are. Hope gets us to faith. And faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. If we lose hope, then how are we going to build our faith? And faith, love. We grow in faith and the love of Christ. Literally, it teaches you how to give up on the promises of God. Yet the promises of God are a surety. They are yea and amen. When you give up on hope, you give up on faith. Because hope builds your faith. It's that godly currency of, uh, of uh, blessings. Hope is the birthplace for faith, and faith is the substance of things hoped for. Christ is the hope of all glory. That's why there's that confident expectation of things hoped for. Because you know for sure, come rain, come thunder, Christ will fulfill it. Because hope does not disappoint. When he says he's going to do it, he'll do it. God is faithful to fulfill his word. So, when the abuser trains you to that point of where you have sunk into land helplessness. The abuser has made sure you move away from, from seeing who Christ is in your life to seeing them as God of the situation. Hope deferred sickens the heart. That's the abuser's end game. Because when you're sick, now he can take control of you. He becomes this puppet master. He takes you whichever direction he wants you to go. You are at his beck and call. Abusers always want to, they want to have authority over you at whatever given point. They want to micromanage your life, regardless of position, uh, race, color, height, you name it. They are going to apply every tactic in their playbook to ensure that they get you to that point. A heart filled with hope will process fraud. And God wants us to to be to grow in the fruit of the Holy Spirit, you know, love, joy, peace, kindness, gentleness, goodness, self control. The abuser doesn't want you to get to that point because you'll be having power. They do not want to share their castle with any other person. They don't want a, a queen with them. They don't want anything in that place other than a servant. So you or the children, if you're having them or you're at work, the narcissist wants to be the king and the king only. The rest of you are servants. You are just pawns on their chessboard of life. You're there to entertain them, to provide for them, to do whatever they want, period. What is even amazing is that a person who is clinically without hope is usually described as someone who is depressed. So you can imagine land helplessness is actually a kind of depression one is put in. And the narcissist enjoys it that way. You can see how sickening these people can be just to satisfy their own selfish, fragile ego. Like someone said, they love to have the authority of a king, but the responsibility of a three-year-old. Be careful about these shape-shifting energy vampires with their grandiose image. That is an abyss for the taking. Abusers are not about teamwork, no. And they want to be in the spotlight. The rest of you cease to be when they're in the spotlight. The moment you attempt to to outshine them, 
not that you even intend to this side you're so naively thinking you're a team for them they are just seeing how to break you person who has been beat up mentally even if there's an opportunity to leave the abuser the person will tell you no i can't leave a healthy mind won't understand it they'll even say well with the person she had the opportunity to live with us but she refused the thing is that mentally they have been crippled they are not thinking like you're thinking they can be talking like they are okay but when you actually take your time to study them you'll notice that these people are, are just a shell they are dead on the inside the the fighter spirit in them has been squashed has been killed and they just find themselves feeling helpless they cannot do anything when you realize their abuser is trying to isolate you or is trying to negate your your being is invalidating you is constantly criticizing you is picking on you i encourage you to seek help as you plan your way out of such a treacherous situation you're in avoid these people at all costs they are not healthy company to be with always remember that you are fearfully and wonderfully made the lord calls you beloved you costed god the father his son he died at the cross for you even if you are the only one on earth remember that you are that valued even if you are the only one who would have died at the cross for you always keep that in mind the abuse wants you to believe that you are so worthless that even if you died no one would bother to check on you not even cross anyone's mind that you ever lived that is not true he calls us by name and our names are written on his palm you are the apple of the lord's eye don't forget that thank you so much for watching blessings